Every drop of water has been through a plant, or an animal, or a cloud many times. It may cover 71% of our planet's surface, but less than 1% of it is usable by humans. And it's under threat from drought, pollution, and climate change. Things that aren't limited to deserts or developing countries. In the developed world, where we don't pay attention to water, there is water illiteracy. We have no idea what's required to get the water. If you live in parts of India, if you live in Bangladesh, if you have to walk to get your water every day, you understand the cost of water and the value of water. It's those of us who have it as an instantaneous resource all the time who don't really understand. In Ireland, our temperate, rainy climate means that water is rarely in short supply. Our island is green because, historically, it has always been wet. These days, no one would consider drinking raw, untreated water. But 160 years ago, that's exactly what Dubliners did. In the early years of the 19th century, the population of Dublin grew rapidly. And the city at the time was supplied with water from the canals. The child mortality rate was an enormous problem. The average life expectancy in Dublin city was about 46 years. And most of that was down to water-related illness. The provision of safe drinking water had a massive effect on public health. First major public water supply for Dublin was developed and brought into the city from the, the fire tree. The water here comes from the Wicklow Mountains. It's from peaty soil, it's acidic soil, and it comes through granite rock. That would be aggressive to the pipes, and over decades, those pipes deteriorate. Most of the network was built up over the years in towns and cities and country areas. Ballymore Eustace Water Treatment Plant was set up in the, the 1930s, due to about 55 to 60 percent of the demand for the Greater Dublin area. Reservoir area itself is about 5,000 acres, so there would have been householders living within that area, so they all had to vacate their houses and those houses are currently under water. At Pulafuca Reservoir, water is filtered and disinfected at the treatment plant, then piped to an open reservoir at Stillorgan before reaching homes and businesses. The water comes here for storage before going into Dublin city. As it leaves the site here, it gets uh, rechlorinated and we also treat it with ultraviolet light, but we do need to keep the birds off the water. So we have a falconer that comes in every day and that essentially keeps the birds at bay and helps us to maintain the water quality. By 2022, the reservoir will be replaced by a new covered water storage facility. The water network, it's like your blood circulation system transporting every day 1.7 billion litres of water from the treatment plants all over the country right to customers' taps. Samples are taken every day, both of the raw water and the final water. Certain basic physical parameters are measured, temperature, colour, turbidity, which is measured, the clarity of the water. But the, probably the most important are the bacteriological tests. Failure is anything above zero. So if there's one bad bug in the water, that's too many. We need to make people understand that the water that they want to use needs to be protected. The fate of our inland waters really depends largely on the way that we treat them and look after them. And we have to think about um, what is in the catchment and who we are sharing the catchment with. We're there to look after the river. We're the custodians of the river to protect it for the fish. The animals, if they're alive and doing well in the river, you know you've got a healthy river. 
clean water. It's incumbent on all of us to protect that and keep that for the future. Most modern land management is leaky. It leaks nutrients because more than what nature can cope with is applied to maximise production. You can see that fertilisers and spreading of slurry and the use of uh, sheep tips and while all these things are necessary, they might not always have been done in a way that was sensitive to our water courses and uh, what they mean to us. Cryptosporidium, it's a tiny protozoan. It's actually a one-celled animal that can occur in both animal and human waste. And following flooding, you can get issues with drinking water and drinking water systems where you actually have a public health problem there. Cryptosporidium is a bacterium that causes infection of the stomach and bowel. It can also affect the lungs. It's highly resistant to chlorine, but vulnerable to a much simpler form of treatment, heat. All water notice is primarily used when a water supply is contaminated. What it does is that it compensates for the fact that the treatment process hasn't worked, isn't working, and so what you do if you boil the water, it destroys the bacteria, it destroys the parasite. It's a constant thing that I have to think about from 7 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Trying to make sure the kids don't drink water while they're in the shower, in the bath. It's very hard, especially with a four-year-old, trying to convince him to stop putting the water in his mouth. First thing in the morning is brushing your teeth, it's having to fill bottles of water. And then coming home again, drinks for dinner, boiling water for washing salads. It's constant. It's a luxury to be able to, when you're buying the water, to know you're doing the right thing and you're not going to be sick out of it. But is that luxury there for everybody? I do wonder sometimes. There's a few issues as well in February when I came out around the school. A few kids were coming home and not wanting to have showers and baths because they were too nervous that the water was going to make them sick. Not just drinking it, they were afraid to touch it at all. All we have here at this treatment plant is chlorination and fluoridation. The necessary barriers that is needed to protect against cryptosporidium just isn't provided here. We are looking to provide a four log barrier, which essentially means 99.99% removal of cryptosporidium. At the moment, we have zero protection here. They did say it maybe just for a few weeks and would review it, but it has been continuously re reviewed since then. Shear, six miles off the Galway coast, is the smallest of the three Aran Islands. For its 260 residents, water shortages have become a part of daily life. The islanders, they're self-sufficient. They appreciate the value of water conservation because it has a knock-on positive benefit for themselves. You know, they, they don't have a Tesco down the road that they can go and just buy bottles of water. The island of Inishir is gradually moving into the 20th century. At the moment, the islanders are digging trenches through the sheer rock in order to lay pipes for their first ever piped water supply. We dad a go for a sein or sun hilla, agus a sun opadal er na hilla, agus na dina, agus fausa chur er na och stoigras a river om na rida. We ansi mege a dalchan kien na hilla, agus chreche a gumi, you know, kempo na machon kajan madachtala. Kena igmunjuna hilan is a v at a more here gapuncha. Agas mojigalika skull, agas egadach de la turn, more tomsh near ain turn at an island. Visha an hu near ain carne tractors tad the machine. It was dead and so boom. When church is <laughs> coming off, we can go to Hill and Arn in the sea. I can see my son in the red and sour look. Jim and Paul is slow. It's 